Well, I have been uh, in academia for 25 years, took early retirement uh, eight years ago. And since then, I've been doing a few exciting things. The reason for taking early retirement was to give us uh, a chance, my wife and me, a chance to travel, see the world, and also do some writing. Luckily, many universities around the world have invited me. So the travels have been paid for by others, which is the best way to travel. Well, I have uh, taught in uh, China four times. And most recently at Rutgers Business School in uh, Newark, I had a one year appointment there, but otherwise shorter assignments in China, Denmark, Finland, Poland, and India. I have an MBA textbook on global strategy and my other book will be coming early next year. I've studied at various places, of course. And prior to my academic life, I worked in industry for several years. Okay, please. So talking about COVID-19. We've all seen charts like this. This is the list of countries with the most coronavirus deaths. US with world's 4% uh, of the world's population has more than 20% of the world's deaths because of COVID-19. Followed by Brazil, India, Mexico, and UK. Of course, UK is given prominence because this is a BBC slide. My suspicion is that India would probably overtake us sometime. I may be wrong, hopefully wrong, but anyway. So the, these charts, I'm sure you've seen them in newspapers. The top chart shows the number of daily cases in the US. And notice that there seems to be an uptick in the number of daily cases in the October timeframe. Fortunately, the uptick in deaths has not yet come. Hopefully it won't come, we'll see. Next slide, please. These are the new cases per day. The chart is interesting because it also shows where the new cases are concentrated lately. Much of the eastern part of US and Midwest. And you can notice the uptick in new cases. Now it has been suggested that we are having more cases because we do more testing. Now it begs the question, if we didn't do the testing, we would sending people directly to the morgue. That is the question. And uh, I think that's a rather, I would not use the word stupid, but that's a bad thing to say that we get more cases because we do more testing. Next slide, please. Now, just two days back, just look at it. As of uh, two days back, US had eight and a half million reported cases, and about 225,000 deaths. And on 24th itself, which was Saturday, 78,000 cases and 871 deaths. But more, most important is the last column, is the percent change over the last two weeks, 32% more cases in the last two weeks compared to the previous two weeks and 15% more deaths compared to the previous two weeks. This is really bad news for us in America. Uh, James, please go ahead. So let's look at some of the impacts uh, COVID-19 has had on the economy, on business, and in our lives, and how people are reacting to it. This is the GDP forecast for this year, 2020, compared to 19, 2019. This is about a month old data from the economist. So China is the only country which is uh, 
has going to have an increase in GDP compared to last year, every other country, the GDP is declining for this year. Uh, for the US, it's about 4% forecast compared to 4% decline in GDP compared to last year. The world is slightly more. Britain is very high. Now, uh, just back, yeah. I was looking at it. I also looked at very recently, October 13th report from the International Monetary Fund. We say the picture for India is actually looking much better for next year. Uh, they're expected to have 8.8% 8 8 growth in 2021 compared to 2020, which would be larger than the growth likely for China. Next, please. Now, this chart is from McKinsey. McKinsey, as you know, is the most uh, prominent consulting firm. And according to a survey they did, and the last column shows the number of people they interviewed, the sample size. Now, their sentiments regarding economic conditions in their country for the next six months. China, 93% of the respondents expect their economy to do better during the next six months from <laughs> September, September through March 2021. India is also quite upbeat. Every other country is not quite upbeat, actually. Only half or less than half of the people believe that our economic condition would improve. In fact, the Europe and Latin America and other developing countries are definitely feel that our next six months would be worse off compared to the current six months. Next slide, please. Coming briefly to impacts on industry and business. Next. Now, last summer, around, I think July, August time frame, I began to think about it and to see which industries might win, which might lose. Next. To me, it seemed like these are the obvious winners. This was in July, August of this year. Technology, including, of course, e-commerce, we know how much uh, we are purchasing through Amazon and other online Retailers, healthcare, obviously, including tele, even I have had telemedicine visits with my doctors. Higher education, including online education, bankruptcy lawyers are going to be doing very well. Next. Here are some of the obvious losers that look to me as of last summer travel and leisure commercial aerospace, retail, and so on. Next. Now, some of my estimates for which industry is likely doing well and not so well is based on trends that were already visible for the last couple of years. They have intensified during COVID-19. Next, please. Now, this is uh, a forecast by McKinsey. So which are the industries likely to be best performing and worst performing over the next two, three years? The top six industries, pharmaceuticals, personal products, software, technology, hardware, media, and telecommunications, they are expected to add $275 billion to their profit pool every year for the coming two, three years. And the worst performing industry, the last six industries, which would be uh, materials, transportation, capital goods, insurance, banking, 
and diversified financials, they are going to be losing out $370 billion collectively in the an annual profit estimate from this year for the next couple of years. This is as of, uh, this is the estimates by McKinsey. Next. So basically these are the trends which are already visible. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has exaggerated the trends. The industries that were performing well are going to be performing better. Industries not performing so well are becoming worse in the terms of their performance. Now, commercial real estate, I just picked up one or two examples. This shows the property values, how they have declined since February 21 this year. Senior housing, almost 50% decline in the value. Skilled nursing, 38%, lodging, 36%, and so on. So I suspect that we are likely to be seeing a bubble burst for commercial housing in the coming year or so. A very good example was REI, the retailer, had set up a beautiful new headquarters campus in Bellevue, Washington, on eight, eight acres of land. And if you have ever visited REI, you know, it's almost outdoorsy. And uh, they have decided not to use it, not to go there. they have decided not to go there, to rent it out or to sell the headquarters stock. Next. Now in terms of future of work, the impact on automation and digitization, which is closer to our topic this morning, or this afternoon for Sairi, because she's joining us from India. Digitization of employee collaboration. 85% of the respondents in terms of their survey said that this is going to further accelerate. Some acceleration to significant acceleration in digitization of employee collaboration. Deployment of automation and artificial intelligence, 68% saying there's going to be more and more, companies are going to be using more and more of automation and artificial intelligence. Digitization of consumer channels, not so much, less than 50%. And I was a little surprised that digitizer supply chains, acceleration is only about 35% of the companies. This was a bit surprising to me because I would have expected this to be a hot industry for using more and more of automation and digitization. Next, please. Closers and bankruptcies. Just I think last week, National Restaurant Association announced that 100,000 restaurants and bars had closed permanently or for the long term. Oh, we, we know that, we have hardly been visiting them. Now this is in the US. Now worldwide, several cities have closed down some roads, possibly permanently, including Milan, Seattle, Oakland, Cincinnati, and so on. Possibly some of them have closed down these roads to create outside seating for restaurants. Here are some big names uh, that have filed for bankruptcy. Neiman Marcus, Lord & Taylor, J.C. Penne, Pier One, Brooks Brothers. These are icon, iconic companies which have filed for bankruptcy. And most surprisingly, Lord and Taylor was actually acquired by a clothing rental firm, a startup, which rents out. It's just like rent the runway, the company which rents uh, beautiful dresses to women for a month and they can return them after a month. So there was a, another startup which actually acquired 
Lord and Taylor, imaginable, unimaginable. Entertain on Broadway in New York has been closed for the rest of the year. New York Met closed for the entire 2021 season. In sports and sporting events, we all know. Next, please. <clears throat> I think this is the last slide. And this is also from McKinsey. This is their estimate. How long these industries will take to recover to pre-COVID-19 levels. Now each line has two. One is a open circle, which says if the virus is contained, hopefully. And the second one is if the virus is not contained, now, arts and entertainment, if the virus is contained, people will start going only by 2024, full, fully to the pre-COVID-19 level. Uh, manufacturing, it could recover this year if virus is contained, but most likely it would linger on for quite some time. Anyway, uh, so these are estimates by McKinsey and company as to how long these industrial sectors will take to recover to pre-COVID-19 levels. Okay, I think that was last. Let's see. Oh, yeah, it's not, the news is not all bad. There have been some positive things one can expect. We are all practicing better hygiene, I hope. Remote working is becoming more mainstream for many occupations. Both my daughters have been working for, from home for the last seven months. Learning and education are becoming digitized and more affordable. Greater opportunities to connect with others. You won't believe how many people have been able to connect. I mean, I studied in the 60s in Calcutta in the Indian Statistical Institute. And we now meet once a month on Zoom. These are the guys and women who I have not met for probably 50 years. Industry is benefiting from the pandemic, pharmaceuticals, healthcare, IT, software. This is what we already seen. And better environment and air quality, lesser road congestion, and we're all uh, avoiding unnecessary or less important travel. So this I view are the more positive aspects of COVID-19. Will the crisis uh, bring positive changes to society? Well, that's a moot question. Thank you very much. I think that was the last, thank you.